Hi there, welcome to a brand new episode of exciting careers in power systems industry. In this video, we are going to discuss international career opportunities within the power systems industry. As we have seen in previous episodes, there's a wide variety of industries, geographic locations, roles, and opportunities that are available for power systems engineers. If you like to travel, go to new places, immerse in different cultures, interact with folks with different backgrounds, experience different ways of living, want to pick up a new language, enjoy a different cuisine, and develop interesting life experiences, then you don't necessarily have to wait for three or four weeks of vacation that you get annually. You can potentially do all of this on an international assignment and in a different geographic location. So how is it possible? The fact of the matter is that your skill set as a power systems engineer is actually quite portable, more than what you'd initially think. It's true that different parts of the world have different codes and standards. They may have different voltages, frequencies, slightly different distribution designs, safety requirements, standard operating procedures, and even work ethics. But the fact of the matter is that more than 90% of power systems engineering remains practically the same throughout the globe. Because the fact of the matter is that all across the globe, we are still using the fundamental concepts of power systems engineering that were developed a couple of centuries ago by inventors, innovators, and entrepreneurs like Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla. So as a power systems engineer, you can carry your expertise and skill set from project to project and location to location. Now let us take a look at a few different scenarios and see how you can leverage your skill set not only to have a rewarding career, but also to gain exciting experiences and wonderful memories. In scenario number one, let us assume that you're working for a large corporation. Generally speaking, most of the large companies based in the US have a global footprint. You can be working in a design engineering firm, MEP, engineering consultancy. You can be working in oil and gas, in renewable, electrical vehicles, heavy manufacturing, mining and metals, electrical equipment design and manufacturing, automotive, just to name a few. In each and every one of these industries, I can give you several examples of companies that have large global footprint. Within the world of design engineering, you have Jacobs, Stantec, Black & Beach, Burns & McDonald, Clure, Bactel, SNC Lavalin, and so many other large corporations that are present globally everywhere. And most of these firms encourage their employees, especially the junior and intermediate engineers, to take on international projects so that they can learn on the field. They can participate in startup and commissioning activities. They can rub shoulders with electricians construction contractors on site, get to deal with a lot of different types of logistical issues that arise on site. And I have personally gone through this exercise myself early on in my career. And I found that my rate of learning exponentially increased when I immersed myself in startup, commissioning support, and on-site field activities. There are just so many things that you don't get to see while working on a design in the office. As you probably know, I've authored several books on the topic of FE Electrical and P-Power exam preparation. And I also run programs for FE Electrical and Computer exam prep. I have students all over the US in different industries. And there's some really interesting work schedules that are associated with field work. Some of my students who work in oil and gas and on site have schedules in which they have one week on and one week off. In some cases, people working in these types of industries have an entire month on and an entire month off. And if the location is remote, then you get additional allowances per diems on top of your increased salary, overtime opportunities, all of which makes international assignments very attractive, especially if you are in the early phase of your career. Now let us deal with the second scenario where you're not working for a large corporation and your company does not have a big footprint. Now within this setting, you have to remember that there will still be opportunities for you to travel. For example, if you're working on a project where the equipment is coming from Europe, for instance, there are a lot of manufacturers in Europe, especially in the electrical domain. You have the ABBs, the Siemens, Schneider Electrics. And if you're working on a project that has some specialized piece of equipment, typically these companies have their global centers of excellence where they would be manufacturing certain equipment. And if you're an electrical engineer who's involved in equipment specification, interacting with the vendor, working out the details, the wraparound engineering, chances are that the vendor is going to invite you to do factory acceptance testing at their own location, which is a very common practice. I've been to many of these factory acceptance tests at vendor sites all across the world. And the interesting thing is that once you gain this experience, you become more confident and comfortable in participating in such activities
FATs on your own. And next thing you know, you're the preferred person to do FATs, factory acceptance tests. Another thing to remember is that even if you're working for a relatively small firm, focus on accumulating the skill set as a power systems engineer. Because if you have the right skills, experience, and attitude, you can leverage that in the short to medium term, get into a larger corporation with a global footprint if that is what you desire. And the third general scenario that I'm going to briefly discuss applies to power systems engineers who have accumulated very marketable skill sets. For instance, you can be an experienced protection and control engineer within the power systems industry who has a track record of working on different types of PNC projects. You can do protective device coordination, run power system studies, program the relays at low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage. You can provide site support and supervise the installation and commissioning of these relays. And I have several students who have gone through my FE electrical program, P power program, become licensed professional engineers in the US and have successfully carved out really rewarding careers in this space. And this is just one example. You can also become a commissioning manager and that can also provide you great opportunities because in all of these roles, you have to have your feet on the ground. And depending on the client that you're working for, the employer that you're working for, their plants, assets, facilities, factories, substations can be anywhere in the world. And as mentioned earlier, when your employer and when your client requests you, asks you to travel for them, typically the terms and conditions that they offer are really good because they also realize that you're leaving the comfort of your daily routine your social circle, your family, your friends, your community, and taking on this assignment, this project for them, it has to be worth your while. And it typically is, both in the short term as well as the long term. In the short term, they will typically incentivize you with salary increases, per diems, allowances, first class travel, paid meals, housing, additional vacation time, one week on, one week off, two weeks on, two weeks off type of interesting schedules, and lots and lots of opportunities for overtime. Sometimes it is straight time, sometimes it can be time and a half and sometimes it can be double time as well again it varies from industry to industry varies from client to client employer to employer and from employee to employee in the long run these assignments these types of opportunities are actually making you even more attractive power systems engineer for future projects for future clients and future employers if you've done some international work have taken on international assignments and projects i'd love to hear from you please share your thoughts experiences and any insights in the comment section of this video Video below. I hope you found it helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Thank you. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of success stories of my FE Electrical and P Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of FE Electrical and Computer Exam and the P Power Exam, then check out these playlists over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.